So it's been a year since we first debuted Carl at the truck show in Hope, BC, and I kind of wanted to go over what a crazy year it's been and just look back on it. It all started with Brigade Days in Hope, BC. We brought Carl down to the truck show, showed it off, we did the big truck parade where we took the truck, we took it down the main street, entered it, it was one of the lead trucks in the convoy through town, showed off the electric drive part of it. Then we let some other truck drivers take it for a drive, see what they think. We got some feedback from those truckers. We had at least 15, 20 people actually driving this thing, giving us some feedback. After the truck show, we were right on to testing. We took this down to Finning down in Surrey. We load tested the generator to test the charging. Uh, how does it charge? How does the generator do? How does battery performance do? Then we went over to the dyno. We tested the dyno performance of it tested the wheels, the spinning, how does the power reduce, what is our efficiency, and then we did a little bit of driving. We learned some lessons. We learned that, well, it likes to snap that drive line. We knew that. We did run into cooling and heating issues. In total, testing took about a month. It took us a month and a half till the end of October was our testing, finding out what worked, finding out what didn't work, reevaluating, and then we spent the next three, four months re-engineering it, talking with our experts that came in to help us, which we are so grateful for, is that over 120 people now have worked to bring Carl into the full production version you see in the shop now. So we spent about three, four months figuring out what we liked and what we didn't like changing it. After that, we were off to the running ordering parts, figuring out what parts worked, what parts we wanted to order, we then went to meet those suppliers, whether the suppliers were in Calgary, Edmonton, or China, when we couldn't find a North American supplier. We went to where the suppliers were. We inspected the quality of our parts. We inspected to see how the parts were performing on their testing before we even uh, bought them and shipped them over. While we uh, were waiting on those parts, we worked on the things we could. We started on frame rails. We started on front suspension, front brakes. We started mocking up the cab, getting things as far as we could until we get the parts. That basically led us to, once they finally had the parts ready, we flew over to China. We inspected them in China for the Chinese parts, because you know we were inspecting those. After that, it took about a month to ship. So with parts supplying, there was some problems. I'm not going to lie. We tried to find as many North American parts as we could. Turns out there's not a lot of parts in North America in the EV space. We thought we had a couple. Originally we were working with Meridor. They asked us to promote their axles on our social media, their 14XE. We did. We actually said we were excited to be working with Meridor on their 14XE. And we talked with them and then it came time for us to make a purchase. And they said, no, we won't sell you any. We're not ready to sell any non-existing OEM or anybody doing retrofits can't buy a Merit or electric axle. So, oh crap, what do we do? We talked with some people and we found some guys who were absolutely great that could work with us to put electric motors on a strong set of sturdy, heavy duty rear ends that I thought was good enough for the logging. Like I was adamant, these were going to be heavy haul off highway trucks I needed the most skookum axles possible. So we worked with motor suppliers and axle suppliers and how to mate them together in order to get that axle developed in relatively record time on that one. Got them over there. We had it all assembled, built. We went over to China to inspect them, put them on the dyno, test them. That was actually a cool trip. First time in my life I've ever had to do international business overseas in China. That was an experience. But it worked out really good. We ended up with a really solid product that kind of lives up to what we want a set of e-axles to be. We have them here on the truck. And while we were doing all this part supplying, because it wasn't just the axles, there was inverters, electric motors, Danfoss components, high voltage components, and then there was all the truck components, suspension, frame rails, some of the things we knew, some of the things we could start on. It was a balancing act that we learned. And dear God, did we learn about supply chain management and parts arrival. Because turns out there's not much sense in having a front steer axle if you don't have the frame rails. And you got to time the frame rails so that they arrive before the other parts arrive. And we worked where we could 
to get things done in the time limit we had. That is one thing we had to adapt to, is that we pivoted. We did not lock ourselves into a set build plan. We said, okay, as the parts show up, we'll work with the parts we get as they show up. So we get a steer axle per, perfect. Mock up the hangers, mock up the leaf springs, put the front brakes on. The frame rails won't be here for another four weeks. Okay, well, when the frame rails are ready, they'll be ready to drop in. And we built off of that. It was quick pivoting, it was quick acting, and we'd work on one job, and then we'd need a part. So we'd work on another job. But that is what allowed us to get this truck built in just a year. One of the things while building this truck is that this truck is a lot different than just working and rebuilding an old truck, because a lot of it is from scratch. So we needed to source parts in a way that we could source parts consistently. So some of this learning hurdles this year was building those supply chain relationships. Not just, hey, I need this one-off part. Here's the VIN number of the truck I had. How fast can you get me that part? It was talking with the suppliers and the manufacturers of parts to say, hey, how do we buy these in a way that we can record it and we can buy the same part over and over again consistently so that as we grow, we have the parts. So learning how to do that was definitely one of the challenges we were facing. It's easy to buy a one-off part, but finding a consistent way to document the parts, source the part numbers, and do it for the more and more trucks going forward was one of the challenges we worked with this year that we've had some amazing parts people working with us on that. Super grateful for them. But yeah, that is definitely one of those things we learned last uh, last winter, last spring, is how to set that up. This year, as well, in between all of these things that they've been happening, we've been working together to establish ongoing business partnerships. If you notice, I've been flying up north, going to Edmonton, Calgary, Ontario, meeting with potential customers to talk about truck partnership developments, working on chassis integration. We've talked with bodybuilders, snowplow makers, concrete mixers, manufacturers. We're talking with them on how do we expand in that vocational sector? What's their needs? So a lot of this last year, in addition to building the truck, has been learning what our future customers need, how to plan the next five, 10 trucks based on those needs, and how do we work with those ongoing lessons? One of the other things you'll notice we've done, and some of this, you've probably seen in some of the videos, is that we keep things relatively cheap. I really don't take much of a salary. I only take what I need to survive. I live in my parents' basement. I eat my meals my mom makes me. <laughs> and I pay myself very little. Every single person that works here makes at least two, three times, four times the amount of money I do. It's you notice when we did these vacations, we went down to Las Vegas, we rode public transit, we rode the bus, we did everything we possibly could to get this truck done under budget. So yeah, we built a tiny little shop and we put the money into building the truck, not ourselves. Some of the things we've gotten in the meantime to help us set up, in addition to the shop, we got a little service truck. We bought a 1969 single axle service truck, which has been great. It'll allow us to, when we're doing the testing, carry the tools and all that we need in case we need to do any remote servicing because let's face it, it's still a prototype. I'm still sure we're gonna have to service a few things. We're gonna have to send it off to customers. We can also service our trucks in the future. We work out of a tent, so working out of a mobile shop truck we thought would be a great idea. We also decided to pivot from a, doing a tri-drive truck to a tandem. All our customers wanted tandem. So what we did is with the other axle is we started the service truck project. In addition to the one service truck, we're starting another little tow truck service truck project now that we have the extra axle for that. So that was something we worked on. And working on these two trucks, while we were waiting for parts, we thought, well, we don't sit around idle. What we'll do instead of sitting around is we'll build a nice service truck, get it rigged up, get ourselves ready for in the future instead of just sitting around, twiddling on our thumbs, waiting for parts, we worked. We grew the company. Some of the other cool things we've worked on in this year, besides the truck, the service trucks, is on the solar aspect of things, we've been working really hard with some partners that came on board that are trailer manufacturers, that build reefers, and we've been working on the solar reefer, solar drive and retrofit kit. So we've done all the engineering, and we actually just had the solar panels arrive. So once we're done this truck, 
one of our those projects we're going to be building a solar 53 foot dry van and a 53 foot reefer believe it or not if you do the math the solar will be enough to run a reefer during the day and then the electrical power from the truck and the hybrid can then run the reefer so you don't have to run any diesel in a reefer which is 20 percent of a reefer truck's fuel consumption and those are small engines they're not tier four or they're janky tier four so it's already cleaning up the massive amount of food product that moves using solar when the trucks are parked at a dock they'll be able to provide uh, power to the dock little portable 53 foot power station similar to our solar light towers that we've been making for finning it's just a 53 foot version of that that is an edison product and we're really excited about that we've done a lot of engineering work on that we've finally got the parts here and that's something really cool to expect in the first half of 2024. Uh, some of the other things that me and Eric have done on a personal note is we built one of the largest solar projects in this entire area. We did a solar plant on an island that was a hybrid diesel solar thing. We've kept doing the solar stuff that existed even before Edison Motors where we took diesel optimize the diesel with batteries put in large solar we continue doing a few of those although they slow down obviously as we focus more on edison but we've still been working away on those little passion projects and the one thing that did fall by is i haven't done as much trucking as i'd like to this year some of the other stuff that's been happening behind the scenes that's super boring so it doesn't always make it to the videos because i'm telling you it's boring because i'm doing it myself and it is very boring uh it's sitting in an office all day but it's the things like homogenization testing, CMVSSS testing, all the regulatory filing stuff, that kind of paperwork, you know, the stuff that makes you an auto manufacturer, getting manufacturing plates, CSA stickers on things. It's all of that's been going, the, our patent pendings, we've got a bunch of patents pending, we've gotten a few trademarks, some copyright on stuff. All of that stuff that actually takes you from a one-off hobbyist working in a shop to an actual manufacturer, We've been working very hard on that and making sure that this truck actually meets highway standard codes. I don't know how to show that in a video. That's just sitting there 12 hours reading the most boring stack of paperwork that you've ever read in your life. One of the things I've been really grateful for this year has been the partnership we built with Flowdraulic. Uh, Flowdraulic is a truck chassis integration specialist. They do things like putting snow plows, winch tractors, bed trucks, hydro vacs, concrete mixers. They put those bodies and tie them into the truck. They do hydraulics and electrification, and they have been so important working with us. They're actually out here in the shop working right now for the last week and a half, and they're gonna be here another two weeks helping us get this truck ready for the Fully Charged Live Show. But they're making sure that while we're building this, that we can target that vocational sector, that our truck can be a concrete mixer, or a snow plow, or a bed truck, and a winch tractor. So their help on this has been so grateful. We even went down to Las Vegas together, and we met with suppliers of different electrification parts, and how are we going to use them, and they've helped to guide us through that business world of supply chain management. They have a lot of experience, and they've really been amazing, fantastic mentors with us in that heavy vocational space on that logistics procurement, parts procurement, talking with suppliers, talking with customers, vendors. Nigel from Flowdraulic especially has been so helpful in walking me down that path of who to talk to. They have the experience and they brought that experience to Edison to really bring us up a whole other level. I cannot thank them enough. So to wrap it up, you're going to be seeing a lot more in the next few weeks. We still have two weeks to go to our deadline and the Fully Charged Live Fully Charged reached out to us. They invited us down to the show in Vancouver to display our truck. And it will be one year to the date that we displayed Carl. We will be displaying our new truck. And I think that's incredibly amazing. And I want to thank everybody on our team. That over 120 people have helped us out to build this truck on some aspect. I can't thank them all here. It would be too long of a video. But I do want to acknowledge how many incredibly brilliant talented, hardworking people have worked to take this truck from Carl in just one year to the truck that you see at Fully Charged Live now in two weeks. I am so grateful for everybody's help. 
to really make this dream become a reality in record time. To just, to go from being a simple log and truck driver to building an electric truck to building a production prototype truck in just two years has been an incredible transition that has only been able to be comp accomplished with a lot of great people helping out. And I am incredibly grateful. Um, last update too, the SnowRunner, American Truck Simulator, and Farm Sim mods will be released the very first day of the fully live charged show, fully charged live show, September 8th. Mods will be available, truck will be on display. We're extremely excited.